The event loop is a pattern we see almost everywhere in software development. This playlist is going to walk through a few of the different kinds of event loops we see with some software libraries like the Win32 API for C and C++, um, LibUV for C, Tornado for Python, and uh, we'll look at Node.js and how that relates to uh, C and LibUV. So, uh, Generally, the concept of the event loop is that we're going to um, set up a series of subscriptions for events that we're interested in listening to, um, some things that are going to be complete in the future that we'd like to know about as they happen or as they fail. We're going to enter into a series of feedback loops then that ask whether or not the app is still running. Uh, and then furthermore, we're going to, in a deeper loop, uh, wait until some event, which again we've subscribed to already here, uh, wakes us up. If there are any events left to process in the queue, which is going to be what woke us up, we manage them, and then afterwards uh, that event left to process condition is going to fail out. We're going to return back here and continue this process of sleeping until there's some work to do. Um, optionally, we might do some kind of work here. If this were a game engine, which is another example of the event loop, that render, uh, render loop, then there's a good chance we do some kind of per frame logic here or some kind of uh, game logic updates here, possibly. Uh, maybe that'd be happening in different threads. Regardless, this is what an event loop looks like and how it works. One of these events may uh, possibly uh, change the game state such that app running as a condition will fail and then the outer loop will terminate and the app would conclude. So what we'd like to do today is we're going to look at a simple application loop and it's going to be using libuv. We've already installed it with vcpkg, which is a very uh, simple way to manage your dependencies for C and C++ on Windows. Uh, some instructions on the GitHub project. You download it and install it and it automatically configures your environment so that Visual Studio will be able to include the libraries that you've installed. Empty project here, call it WV testing. Add new source file, their entry point. We'll include the main header file from WV which in turn includes, I think, STDIO and some of the other standard library headers. Oh, it's not saying it. Why is that? did not have it installed. So that's how VCPKG uh, works. It's fairly straightforward. You're able to search to see if you have no arguments, it would just list which dependencies you have installed. Otherwise, you can provide a search query and here we've chosen to install LibBD. Okay, let's So pick it up now or no? Okay, well, it's not saying in the IDE, but uh, actually let's just restart the IDE then. Okay, now we're good. So what we're going to do in our elementary example here is we're going to get a handle to UV's default loop. What we can think of again with libuv is that it provides facilities for event looping uh, and for streams and API calls which are able to kind of easily interweave with those events so that we're able to provide a series of callback functions and intercept various stages of work and uh, kind of uh, work within 
safety uh, parameters that they've laid out for us. It handles things like synchronization, uh, logging, event management, mutexes, threading, file management. But here we're just going to get a handle to the default IO loop. And then we're going to immediately try to run that loop with the default settings. So now we built an executable. We'll run it. Oop. So what we find here is that libuv testing returns immediately without any results. In the context of our diagram, starts, prepares subscriptions, and app running is a consequence here, not of some global variable, but in libuv's case, it's looking at whether or not we have any kind of timers, handles, or work left process, uh, because we haven't specialized, or excuse me, specified any kind of outer loop of our own. Uh, this is going to immediately say no, no timers have been queued, there's no functions, there's no work waiting, um, it's not running. So immediately we reach our end condition. However, if we um, create a timer callback, which receives as uh, an argument its own handle, and we say repeating callback, we'll create a timer, which you have to initialize and uh, pass to a specific loop. and then every 2,000 milliseconds or two seconds it'll fire again. Now if we go and build the executable and run it, it's going to presumably run forever printing this is a repeated callback. So what's happening here is the timer is now something that the application is interested in. We've, in our prepare, excuse me, preparations, we've initialized the timer, subscribed it to the main loop. And now when app running happens, it's looking at that and it knows that there's a repeating callback that is never canceled. So we enter into the cycle of sleeping and waiting until that callback's timer is going to occur. The event that happens is the callback is executed and then there is no other event. And we continue on until the next uh, 2000 millisecond event is woken up. And uh, in this case, the only thing that will terminate it is us sending a signal to interrupt the process, uh, which is above the level of this application.